People who are trying to learn Adobe Photoshop are often confused by the curves adjustments. The curves are a very powerful tool that allow you to control color, contrast, and brightness of the picture, all with a single command. But the dialog box, as you can see here on the screen, can be, can be rather confusing. Um, it looks like it's got a graph here with a line reaching diagonally across it. This, um, this line actually is a visual representation of the tones in your picture. The area near the bottom here at the bottom left corner is the dark tones, at the top right here is the light tones, and then in the middle would be the mid-tones. And this line you can actually move using the cursor, and by raising and lowering the line you can adjust the brightness of the areas of the picture that you've, that you've manipulated. For example, if we would grab the line here in the center and move it upwards like this, that brightens the picture. And if you look at the uh, if you look at the uh, Macbeth color checker image that I have behind here, you can see that the effect is most pronounced in the midtones because I'm moving this in the middle of the picture, not in the top and bottom, or you know, not in the midtone, or not in the highlights and shadows areas. If I were to go up here to the top, which this area represents the light tones, and move it, you would see that the greatest effect is actually on the lighter tones like the white and the light gray here, or the light colored squares like this flesh tone or this light blue. And there's less effect in the darker tones like this black or this dark gray. Um, likewise with the, uh, with the lower part of the graph which will affect the darker tones much more than it affects the light ones. And you can see here that I've lightened up this darker tone quite a bit. Now the, the other areas have lightened a bit too because you can see the line has moved upwards through its entire its entire course, but it hasn't moved up as much in the lighter areas than, as it has in the darker areas and in the midtones. Now, if you want to, if you want to affect one certain area of the picture without affecting without affecting other tones, let's say you want to lighten the dark areas, but you don't want to lighten the light areas, you can actually raise up the dark tones like this, and then go up and place another point on the graph and pull it back down to the middle position where it started out as. And then you'll see we have where the light tones have not been affected, but the dark tones have. And you can see the effect by turning the preview on and off. Notice how the, the dark colored frames have really lightened quite a bit, but it really hasn't changed the white square itself very much. This is a technique that's useful for changing contrast, because what we've done here is we've actually lowered the contrast of the picture. And you can lower the contrast even further if you were to pull the light tones down lower and see how the picture becomes much flatter and lower in contrast that way. Now of course you can also do the opposite. You can increase contrast using a similar technique. To increase contrast you can lighten the light tones and then pull the dark tones back down. And if we turn the preview off here to see our original image you can see it's become much contrastier, much punchier. Now, in addition to controlling overall contrast and brightness, you can also use curves for color balance changes. Up here where it says channel, RGB means that you're going to affect everything. You're going to affect the overall tone of the picture without affecting its color balance. If you click on this, you'll see that you have the choice of red, green, or blue. And these are the three primary colors that are used in Photoshop. Now that confuses a lot of people who have an art background because we've always been told, you know, even in art classes in school when we were children, that the primary colors were red, blue, and yellow. Um, actually, the, the primary colors, there's actually two sets of primaries. Um, there's additive primaries and subtractive primaries. Photoshop uses the additive primaries, which are red, blue, and green. The subtractive primaries are cyan, yellow, and magenta. Now cyan is very similar to blue and magenta is similar to red, so that's where the red, blue, and yellow um, standard that's taught to that's taught to artists came from, because those are those are those are colors red, blue, and yellow are colors that are much more easily obtained as artist paints, and they and they work close enough, but they're not perfect. the The true primaries are cyan, yellow, and magenta. Now, what you want to do is if you've got a picture that has the color balance that needs to be changed, you would find the one that you either want to increase or decrease. For example, if the picture was not red enough you could choose red and you can see the line here turns red just to let you know that that's what you're working with and by moving the red line up you actually make the picture 
much warmer in tone, you make it redder. And you can also make it less red by pulling it down. And you can see this most pronounced in the grays, because these should be neutral gray, but you can see they're starting to take on, they're taking on kind of a, a bluish green, kind of a cyan sort of color, because red and cyan are opposites on the color wheel. Now, just as we did with the tone changes, you can also affect only the highlights or only the shadow tones in color balancing. Let's say you have a picture that's got shaded areas and brightly sunlit areas. Let's say the shaded areas are a little bit too too blue in color, which is common. The light in, in shadows is cooler than light in sunlit areas in natural light. You could go to the blue, and if the if it's the shadow areas that are the problem, you can reduce the blue in the dark tones, and you can see that that's made them yellower. And then you can go back up here and pull it back up in the light tones so that your correction is only going to affect the dark tones while leaving the lighter tones alone. And you can see the effect of this when I turn it on and off. You can see that the darker tones down here have gotten yellower, but these lighter tones really have not changed. And you can do this with any of the, pri with any of the three primaries. Blue and yellow are opposites on the color wheel, so by, if you've got a picture that's too yellow, you can also choose the blue, and by increasing blue, that cancels out yellow. If you have a picture that's too blue, then you would just pull it down to add yellow. Now, green can be used to, choose, to correct both green and magenta, because green and magenta are opposites on the color wheel. So by decreasing the green, you're actually making the picture more magenta, as you can see in our, in our neutral tones down here. Or you can get rid of magenta if the picture happens to be too purplish looking by raising the green and making the picture greener. The third primary is red, and as I noted earlier, red and cyan are opposites on the color wheel. So if you have a picture that is too, that is too red, you can reduce the red. If you have a picture that's too cyan, you can raise the red. Cyan's kind of an unusual one. A lot of times people will look at a picture that's too cyan and they'll think it's too they'll think it's too blue because cyan and blue are very similar looking to each other. Um, what, what what you can do is you can first try the blue and pull it down to get rid of the blue and if that doesn't make it look right, if it looks, starts looking too green, then you know that the actual problem was was cyan and not blue and then you can choose the red one and increase the red to get rid of that cyan. As you can see what I've done here, that makes it too red. Now my original my original image of the color checker is actually color balanced pretty correctly, so it really doesn't need any changes. I just chose this as an example to show you because it's most obvious what effect this has on the different tones by seeing these these calibrated steps here. I'm gonna go ahead and close this and we'll look at a real picture. This is an actual photograph here, and I actually like the color balance of this alright. I don't think that it really needs an overall change, but we can play around with this a little bit and see what effect that the different controls have. We can, by using the RGB channel, we can affect the overall tone here. If we think it's too dark, we can lighten it. Um, I really don't like how that looks though, because I think it's starting to make the midtones a little bit too light. Or we could darken it overall, but I think that that's, that's making it a little bit too dark. Now, one thing that you might want to do, if you look in the uh, darker tones here, like underneath the cars where the tires are, we might want to lighten those up a bit, get a little more, see how the tires have a little more detail in them now. Real tires are almost never pure black, they're actually very dark gray, so this is actually a more accurate representation. Now, the, of course, the downside to that is we've lost some contrast in our lighter tones. In this case, it really hasn't affected the light tones much because you can see that the line really has not been dropped down too much lower than the normal. If we were to go up here and grab this and pull the light tones down, we would actually get a lot more detail up here in our sky at the expense of having an overall lower contrast for the whole picture because you can see these tones here are starting to flatten out a bit. Now you can select these points that you put on here and delete them by selecting the one you want to delete and hitting the delete key which is what I'm doing here I'm 
Let's see what happens if we increase contrast. A very easy way to increase and decrease contrast is to simply put a point right directly in the center. Because when you do that, if you raise or lower the, dark, the light highlights or shadows, the, the, whole, the whole line will kind of rotate around this axis that we put in place here. So if we raise our lights here, you can see that the darks are automatically going down and you're getting overall higher contrast. And let's move this out of the way so we can see the picture. I'll turn the preview on and off so you can see. The picture here looks pretty good, maybe slightly flat. Here it's a lot punchier, it's a lot, lot stronger contrast. We really haven't lost much detail in these dark tones. But if we look in the lighter tones, you know, some of these very light things like this house in the background or the this bridge abutment here, these have maybe gotten a little bit too light. I think if I were going to do this for my final picture, I would dial this back a little bit. You know, add a little contrast to the picture, but not quite that much. And I think that looks pretty nice like that. Now, as far as color balance, um, the picture has a has a very warm look to it because this was shot on a sunny, warm afternoon. Let's see what happens if we take some of that warmth out by increasing the blue. And we can see that's really messed up the color of this car here, because this color was a this car is a burgundy colored car, and it's starting to turn purple because of increasing the blue too much. Let's see if we manipulate the red. Let's reduce the red slightly. Now, if we reduce the red slightly, we can see the overall picture starting to get kind of bluish greenish. This whole area here, which is kind of a faint yellow, is actually starting to turn green. The grass is starting to look a little bit, a little bit um, too green. A little, doesn't have that warm glow to it. But actually, I'm going to go ahead and say OK on this so that we have a picture that is off in color. And we'll use the curves then to correct it back. Now, this looks a little bit too... When you first look at this, you might say, well, maybe it looks too blue or too green or too cyan. You can't really tell. So let's, let's try it and see. Let's try the green. Because like I said, these areas look too green. Let's try to reduce the green a bit and see what we get. Well, by doing that, we've gotten rid of the green in, the, in here. This looks very nice. Um, actually, most of it looks pretty good. Now, the stones here have a very slight magenta tinge to them. Let's see what would happen if we would, instead of using the green, let's try doing the, uh, let's try the blue, because it did look a little bit blue. If we reduce the blue, that just makes the problem worse. This looks even greener and more of a yellowish green. That's really ugly. So let's not do that. Let's go back up here to the red, and we'll increase the red get it back to close to where it was before. Now I think this is actually the best way putting the red back back in place because when you see the stones here they've lost that magenta tone that we got when we reduced the green but at the same time we've also gotten rid of that greenish look up here so I think this is the best way to do this. Once we got it the way we want hit OK and we're done. So the curves looks very complicated but once you realize that that line that goes diagonally across the curves box is merely a visual representation of, of the, the different tones in the picture and by grabbing that line and raising and lowering it in different parts of that curve you can actually affect the color balance or the, or the brightness and contrast in the light tones, the mid-tones and the darks. So once you realize that that's how it works, it's actually a very simple and very powerful tool. It's my main tool that I use in Photoshop for color balancing and adjusting contrast and brightness. I very rarely ever use levels and I never use the color balance or any of the other commands. The curves the curves adjustment, even though it's a little more complex, gives you a lot, a lot more control. It's a lot more powerful and a lot more precise, and that's why I like that for the work I do. I think it's worth the effort that it takes to learn it and to practice with it.